is something new under the Hollywood sun. This tremendous sound stage, which is as long as a city block, is too small to hold the big ensembles planned by Warner Brothers for Kane and Mabel, a new musical production. So they're making it 35 feet higher. Lloyd Bacon, director of Kane and Mabel, explains to its stars, Marion Davies and Clark Gable, just how high the stage must go to accommodate the gigantic ensembles which are going to be the most magnificent Hollywood has ever attempted to produce. As the studio call goes out for a record number of chorus girls to fill the enlarged stage, to Warner Brothers Studios in Hollywood come dancers, showgirls, and chorus beauties from all over the country to make application for parts in the big ensembles. But from the thousands that apply, only a small percentage are selected. For a movie chorus girl must have not only perfection in face and figure, but also exceptional dancing ability and a personality that will register before the close-up of the movie camera. To Bobby Connolly, the man in charge of staging and directing the musical numbers in Kane and Mabel, goes the difficult task of selecting the prettiest of all these pretty applicants. And his experienced eye can pick a perfect chorus girl at a moment's glance. When director Connolly is satisfied that the dance numbers are letter perfect, the erection of the sets begin. Almost overnight, the stage is transformed into a seething mass of beauty. Powerful arc lights are strung overhead. Electricians, cameramen, prop men, wardrobe women, and tremendous camera cranes appear on the set and actual shooting is underway. Listen, lady, I can't sleep. What am I supposed to do? But I got a fight tomorrow night. Well, I'm so tired from dancing that my knees are sprung. But I wouldn't stop now if I had to do it on a picket fence. Get out. I'm supposed to be a fighter. Now, what am I doing? Playing post office all over the front page with a dame. I know, but now you must remember, champ, that all the world loves a lover. Oh, so I've switched titles, have I? I'm America's sweetheart now, am I? But get this. That cheap little publicity hound has got to apologize for this, or I'll wring her neck until the newspapers won't be able to get a word out of her without a corkscrew. <laughs> 